All right. Well, I want to welcome you all to uh, the first ever AP Gov online teacher workshop. Something brand new for all of us. Um, an idea that, that came uh, about just a few weeks back as, as California, the governor announced that we would all be going online. I was in a park with a few teacher friends of mine, social distancing and we were just hanging out and we were discussing, talking about the challenges that we're all facing and how many questions we all have about how to get this done. Some of us have a lot more experience than others, and, and yet we all realize that no matter the level of experience, uh, there's a lot of new ground here. Um, and no matter the experience that one has, uh, there is room for learning for all of us. And so we were talking, and, and this idea came from that. It's come together pretty quickly. We've got about 80 of you who've registered today. And um, the way I envision this, the, the way my little team and I have envisioned this, and it is a product of a team, to be honest with you, I'm just a sort of the point man up front here. But um, I'd like to give you just a little presentation on um, how I build rapport or one, two, three ideas of, of how I build rapport. And, then I'd like to hand it over to Kelsey Falkowski. I'd like him to introduce himself and share with us a, a few ideas about how he builds rapport. We've got Paul Hamill next. And um, again, rather than the host here introducing, uh, I'm gonna keep this just kind of nice and casual and that everybody who either hosts, co-hosts or presents introduce himself. Um, and then, uh, Carlo, uh, Carlo, I don't know. I haven't seen you. Are you here yet? Did, did you? Uh, I'm here. Hi, Peter. Good. Carlo, am I saying your your net your last name right? Jen Carlo Huntia. Carlo Huntia. All right. And I can't I can't wait for you to hear from all of these guys. I've learned so much from them. Um, I want you all to feel free uh, to uh, ask any questions you want in the chat box. Again, the way I envision this is I'll try to sort of run this from the host app. And today, Kelsey is gonna look at the chat box. Um, but if you don't, feel free to go wherever you want with this. We're not gonna put too many rules or expectations down. If you feel like just coming on mic and, and letting us hear what you have to say, whether it be a question or a comment, feel free or put it in the chat box. Kelsey sees it in the chat box. He's gonna, and he's gonna bring it to our attention one way or the other. And, uh, as we go through, we want to hear from, from all of you uh, what you might have to say and think about all of this. But to get it started, let me just explain to you something. So uh, on this question of how to build rapport, uh, you know, as I said, I, I, I'm fortunate I've been able to, to reach out to a, a really talented pool of educators, teachers, and, and higher-ups, uh, you know, as well as access all the wonderful stuff that appears on the Internet, Edutopia, and so on. And, um, you know, the picture has come back that, that, that as that when we talk about rapport, um, the studies seem to suggest that the teachers generally really struggle to come to some kind of agreement as to the definition of the word. Um, but what they, what they will agree on is what rapport leads to. And, and generally speaking, there's so much science on this and so much has been written on it, but if you try to boil it down in real simple terms, it's, it seems to suggest that you know, rapport is, is what is needed so, so that both teacher and students, it's not just about the student, but teacher and students will, will give it their best. Without rapport, there seems to be pretty good evidence that says you know, people are not gonna give it their best. There, there also seems to be a pretty good bit of evidence that says with rapport, uh, teachers and students will be less likely to feel burnt out. Um, I think that may be as much as, as, as we, can, we can say with any degree of certainty. Um, in any event, most teachers will say rapport is needed, and yet I've got some very good friends who say it's much ado about nothing. Uh, you know, they point to some famous examples of athletic teams, the New York Yankees from several years back, I guess, won a World Series. And, and by all uh, definitions, there was no rapport there, and so I guess you can get the job done even without it. But the, the, the little slide I have for you here, um, if we are going to look at what the science, what the experts, what the articles all say, what are some great ways to build rapport prior to this era of online teaching? You know, there are a number of, of really good suggestions there. And uh, yet, I think as Carlo is going to point out later this evening, he's going to offer up one. He's going to suggest that something else should have gone on there. 
onto that list. And maybe you're gonna have some yourself and I, I know what Carl's gonna come forward with and I'm frankly gonna agree with him. Um, and then for a lot of reasons, I'll explain to you why I left it off or we'll just save it for later, but, but he's gonna make a really good point. Um, so if we can maybe not agree as what is rapport and we can agree as uh, why rapport is important or what can rapport lead to, uh, maybe even agree as to some basic things that will uh, result in rapport. Of course, the real difficult question is how do you translate what appears on the slide in front of you to the online learning, to the era of, of online teaching? How do you do these things? And this is what we want to just discuss today. I want to just share with you a couple of things that I have done. And the first um, is, I'm gonna get, just give me a second here. I see this is gonna be a little bit more problematic. As I'm gonna just put a link into the chat box. And, um, I, you know, there we go. Let me bring this on back then, okay. So I, I'm one who believes that if you, uh, to, if you celebrating your student successes and, and their uniqueness, and I don't mean just their academic successes, you know, the more you, you can do of that, uh, the more likely you are going to be building rapport. And so uh, with, with that said, I have a colleague, a fellow social studies teacher, a younger guy, very talented guy named Andrew Gale. He certainly believes that. And Andrew and I got together here right after, uh, right before school shut down. And together we came up with this little idea. San Marino High School is the school of the Titans. And so we created this thing called Titan Talk. And Titan Talk is, is, is essentially a podcast, though sometimes we do it more like a, a video, but it's a podcast, somewhere around uh, five minutes long, uh, maybe a little bit longer, 20 minutes in some instances, sometimes even an hour just recently. But what we'll do is um, we interview um, educators who have something of value to offer, but we also interview students who have something of value to offer. In other words, we try to celebrate their uniqueness. And um, just prior to shutdown, our first interview was, a, was with Trevor Packard, the, the college board president. And Trevor talked about all the changes that had been brought to, to uh, the world of AP this past summer and so on. And then right after shutdown, that's when we really decided to, to focus in a little bit more on the students. And we interviewed two students. One is Craig McLaren Swan and the other is Calvin Ryan. And if you click on that, that link there, you'll just see um, Craig, uh, right after shutdown, dad, they got together, they bought themselves an old, I think it was a Mazda Miata or something like that. And it sits in their garage and, and, and Craig is slowly but surely rebuilding the car as best as he can, uh, you know, in, in this very, very difficult time. And so all we did was interview him. And um, you, may, you may agree or disagree that that's a rapport building measure. We, we seem to think that it certainly built rapport our, our feelings for this particular student and, and vice versa. And you can just take a look at that video. I've got a second one for you here. I'm gonna put that in the chat box right now. And uh, this is Calvin Ryan. So uh, Calvin, um, prior to shutdown, March, was working in an in and out and continued to work there. Uh, we heard about that and just decided to interview him, ask him some, some basic questions, you know, to what extent do your parents support this? What are the security measures that, uh, that are being taken? Uh, two wonderful little interviews. And so my point here is, this is just something we've done, something simple. Uh, we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, they're one takes, we, we, we just, we filmed it live. Uh, if you watch it, you know, you, you get that sense. And, uh, something we're going to probably continue to do in the fall and, and, and um, we already have a list of students who we you know want to interview and uh, and we'll see where that goes so that's just one thing and then the other thing and i definitely want to keep this under five minutes is um, something called titans got talent this is these interviews here video video interviews that's titan talk titans got talent i'm going to put that link up for you here again we're the home of the titans and um Andrew, myself, a couple others, um, in the spirit of trying to celebrate student successes, their uniqueness, um, I, 
took the lead and I created this Facebook page. And um, it's private in the sense that <laughs> I'm seeing Tamara say that she's also the Titans. Um, it's private in the sense that only those uh, who we allow to join can post or comment or even like. But it's public in the sense that everybody gets to see it. So what is Titans Got Talent? Well, it's a place where anybody who has produced any work that's in any way deemed worthy or that they believe is their best effort, whether it's deemed worthy in our eyes or not, uh, they can post there and um, showcase their work. All again in the spirit of celebrating student uniqueness and, and their successes. Now, um, I'll just close out with, um, you know, we, we realize that there are issues with that, um, especially as we talk Black Lives Matter movement and, and uh, you know, those kinds of things, students wanting to have their work put up there that uh, the school is just gonna, you know, perhaps struggle with. Uh, I think you can kind of see where I'm going here. So we keep it pretty tightly moderated, but um, it's a nice way to celebrate. And we've ended up celebrating all kinds of things, performances, um, anything the students have put up. Uh, that's what we show up. And we've got, I don't know, it's not, not super popular. Um, again, we started it after shutdown, but I don't know, 100, maybe a couple hundred students um, have signed up. and. We hear from the parents, they don't sign up, but they watch it and they seem to like it. So that's the two things we do. And um, unless there are any questions or anybody want to make a comment, we'll, we'll pass it off to Kelsey. I went a little longer and I'm so sorry. Thanks, Peter. Um, is there anywhere um, I can send you a link just to post on your end, if you wouldn't mind? Um, yes, uh, you just send it to my email. Oh, I just posted it in the uh, public chat as well. Okay. so. Uh, and what do you want? So it's in the chat. Do you want me to do anything with it? You can just click on it. So I don't have to. I don't know if I'm even able to share on my end okay. the shared screen. All right. So are you seeing it come up right now? I am not. All right. It's not coming up right now, right? No, it's not. Uh, FRK. Oh, and there we go. Nice. Ah, there it is. And I'll make you the host here in just a second as well. All right. So, okay, go ahead. Thanks, Peter. Um, my name is Kels Fugowski. I've uh, taught AP Gov uh, for probably the past five or six years, along with uh, AP US History, and um, just started posting YouTube videos for my own students. And um, to my surprise, you know, my students actually weren't watching the videos. Um, it was other people, and that's how, I guess, Peter found me. So I'm very fortunate to have met Peter in this uh, virtual format. But um, of course, in terms of building rapport, um, one of the first things I do, and that's very AP Gov related, if you recall the old format of the AP Gov exam, it sort of looks something very similar to what you have in front of your screen. And I found that this was a great way to start to, for the students to introduce themselves, while of course learning the very important action verbs that we all know as AP Gov teachers, from identify yourself, explain two things you accomplished this summer, describe two long-term goals uh, with taking this class, and then a compare and contrast question. I feel like this gives students sort of the opportunity to, again, familiarize themselves straight out of the gate in taking AP Gov. And of course, we know that this has, you know, changed to some extent the format, but um, it's also just a good way to begin to start that relationship. And I'm a very, very firm believer that starting that relationship early on is just pivotal. I mean, you're gonna have students from all different ends of, of the spectrum in terms of their ability level, what they're bringing to the classroom. And I think even when you know the students do this, I have the students who feel comfortable enough read out their FRQ, and I even do it myself. So again, just that modeling process, they get used to these action verbs that they're gonna be seeing so much of this. And um, it just, you know, it's a good bonding activity. Um, so that's that's probably the first thing I, I typically do on the first day of school. Um, it takes perhaps the whole period quite easily, um, usually bleeds into the next day as well. And in terms of a virtual format, you know, I would probably still do something like that. And of course, nothing's ever going to replace the 
face to face in person type of conversation that you can have with a student as opposed to uh, you know a monitor but uh, I think this this will be um, helpful um, but I think we as teachers sometimes you know are so big on rapport building you know in the first week or so and then we get very much bogged down in the content the skills the demand of our curriculum and we forget to sort of infuse it uh, throughout the year and one of the things I really like to do, although this may seem very cheesy, um, January 24th is National Compliment Day, and I literally make a PowerPoint presentation on every single student. It doesn't have to be very big, but each student gets a slide or two um, with a compliment, something that you know I genuinely believe about them. I believe that as teachers, we have to find the good in all of our students. And what student? doesn't like a compliment, especially a genuine compliment. And I, I think that's just so important because so much of teaching is building that relationship. They're not gonna care about the content until they know someone cares oftentimes. So those are my two big things, but you know, I also find just to sprinkle this in, humor always helps. Um, I think that's also a great way to, to build relationships um, as well. So those would be my, my main things for building rapport. It, Kelsey, I um, January it was a date January twenty fourth. Is that National National Compliment Day? Is that That's the yeah. I actually literally put it in my phone. Um, huh. And if it typically falls, if it falls on like a Sunday, then I just do it the next day. But I believe it's uh, January twenty fourth. Um, and, and so I got it in, in a digital environment. How would you do that? What were you saying? Uh, virtual environment. Uh, so in a digital format, I mean, it could just be you know if you have your Zoom or Google Hangout format, you know, you just hit every student and the students really I think enjoy listening to the compliments you're giving to other students and sometimes they'll even sort of echo that same sentiment and um, you know sometimes you share something new about that student that maybe the other students didn't really know about that's positive and um, you know it just makes I think even greater class cohesion as well that's what I was wondering if you if you share it publicly so mm -hmm. yeah I, I hit all my students and it, it's hard because sometimes you you drone on and on and even the students sometimes who think you don't like them, you know, um, you know, because you might just be, you know, trying to get them back on task every day. And it shows that at the end of the day, yes, you do care. You just want, you know, you want the best for them. And your, your idea here for a get to know you kind of activity modeled after the free response questions. Um, where did, where did you get that idea from? Did that, did, did anybody else bring that to you or is that an original? Yes. I thank you for, uh, prompted me on that. Um, I got that from a professional development like many years ago um, before I started teaching AP and uh, I sort of modified it a little bit but uh, that's where the, the genesis of that came from. Well I had, I had never seen that or heard of that before and Kelsey and I talked just before uh, we went live this evening and um, I thought that was such a cool idea. I immediately called up my, AP, my other AP Gov teacher friends and uh, there's some real talent in that group, and they love this idea. They just love. It. Is there anybody in the chat box that has tried this before? I mean, anybody in this group? Can you mention, um, let us know in the chat box? Have you tried this before? Wow. Interesting. And now that we see it, I'm curious how many of you would be willing to give this one a go? Okay. Yeah. I would think so, Carly. Yeah. yeah. Wondering, okay. Yeah, we're looking at the chat box fill up with, well, we're going to talk about Flipgrid. Yeah, Paul. Paul, feel free to jump in here and talk about Flipgrid if you want, you know, but we're, we're seeing the chat box fill up with yeses. Is there anybody, um, you know, feel free also to say, no, I'm not going to give this a go. You know, in talking to teachers, I, uh, especially AP teachers, um, I found that a lot of them were saying things like, um, I'm just not comfortable with these kinds of activities. Um, it's not my nature, et cetera, et cetera. Perhaps less so this than, than more the sharing of the personal, which we'll talk about later. But. And I think it's important to remember that, yeah, even though these are higher, you know, level students at the end of the day I feel like many of their emotional level you know emotional needs are still very much the same regardless of their their higher intellect what's you know in that case 
Yeah, I'm just looking at the, the chats as they come in here. I think one of the challenges, Peter, that we face, um, obviously, and in, in clearly that coming up to speed in the past three to four months, five months, whatever the case is, um, is really thinking um, both conventionally and unconventionally. And obviously the conventional part is covering content and making sure students are prepared for whatever they need to be prepared for at the end of the year, whether it's college or um, whatever confronts them um, in the following year. But the other part is, uh, and we talked about this in the phone today, maintain that sense of human contact um, and, 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 and being human with them in the element, um, whether it's online or, or in re IRL in real life, uh, but being able to sit with them, meet them where they are and, and kind of find out. Um, and I love this idea in terms of identify, explain, and describe. A um, couple of things that I did with students this year uh, when we went online uh, quite abruptly in March. Um, I went into a, a greeting every class uh, with a question of the day. And the question of the day could range from, if you could be a cereal, uh, what would you be? Um, if, if you could be um, a color uh, from the Crayola crayon box of 48, who would you be? Um, which, which brings out a whole bunch of different uh, questions, if, if you think of Crayola in today's day and age. Um, so I, my, my add on here, um, I like the idea of building rapport. What I like also is building relationships. Um, and I think that as we talked about this too, it, it takes a while to get comfortable with saying you have a relationship with students, but uh, the, the research, if we want to fall back on that, always indicates that this, the more comfortable a student feels in a classroom environment, the more successful they're going to be. Uh, and that relationship building is really uh, the responsibility of us as teachers to uh, appropriately engage students with specific boundaries, introduce ourselves as human beings, uh, compassionate and empathetic human beings with them, uh, and let them feel comfortable. Uh, so I, I've done crazy things this year from my wife and I have done uh, cooking videos at night where we tried to, to teach kids how to teach how to cook Thai curry. Um, and then we've done stupid things like, you know, how do you cook their favorite egg uh, from from hard boiled eggs, what's your favorite recipe down to, you know, whatever, um, whatever it is um, that students can engage on, on a very basic and equitable level. Uh, An egg is very equitable. It, 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 it sheds no bias. Uh, Paul, you see a difference between rapport and relationship building? No, I, I think it's similar. Um, relationship building is part of building rapport with students. But it goes further or I, I was just... Um, I think rapport probably is the first thing that we engage in in, in building a, a relationship based on trust with students. Okay. Uh, students have to trust us as, as experts in our field and um, and then we have to trust them as being engaged learners. So to, if I were to say, if I could be a color in that, in that Crayola box, I want to be blue. What would you, what would you say or do or what would you expect me to <laughs> well, do? Well, first thing I would say, well, which shade of blue? Are you going midnight blue or are you going sky blue? And I would say sea blue. What would you say then? Okay. What kind of sea? Are you looking at Mediterranean sea or are you looking at some kind of Adriatic? <laughs> Wow, um, you know, Mediterranean for sure, but uh, Pacific, <laughs> Pacific blue, I could do it too for me. And so I guess the point with the questions that, and, and, and what it, it did take time. Each class took anywhere from five to 10 minutes um, to get through the students and let them have that comfortable space to say, I'm feeling this way via a box of crayons today. Um, yeah, I did make up the questions myself. Uh, at times they were completely off the top of my head. At other times I'd pick a student and say, hey, you know, Brandon, you're on top for today, for today's question, what are you gonna ask? Um, and let it come from them. Yeah. And, and the feedback by the end of the year was, that was the best part of their class for AP Gov in the last, you know, three months from March until May. Um, and when I didn't ask a question one day, cause I was feeling kind of down, they were like, hey dude, where's the question for today? <laughs> and I was like, oh, you caught me. Um, a different one every day. Did you ever yeah. feel pressured, like you started off saying, um, this is taking away valuable time from, from the content, from delivering content? Did you feel that pressure? Um, as a 25 year veteran in, in teaching, um, no. I just said, you know what, this is a whole different environment we're in right now. These kids need to have a balance of content and they need to have a balance of empathy. Uh, and I think they need the empathy more. Very nice. Um, yeah. yeah. 
Do you want to uh, share anything else that you've done as, as long as we have you here now? And I would love um, to see the cooking video, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. right. So we have, we have kind of a, a course management system where kids can upload videos too. And so I challenged them. And, and some of the videos these kids did were, were way more professional than I ever did. Uh, you know, they had like songs going in with it. They sped up the videos. Um, and I, I gave them extra credit for it. Um, it's like, well, you wrote a B essay, but I'm going to give you an A because you, 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 you did a, a really fantastic video on how to cook um, stir fried rice. Uh, so <laughs> unconventional, but um, we had a good time. Yeah, Bill's rapport. And as long yeah. as we're at it, and I, and I didn't even introduce where I taught, or maybe I did, I don't recall, but uh, Paul, where, where do you teach? And um... Um, I teach at a school called Marine Catholic. Um, it's one of the uh, archdiocesan schools in the San Francisco County. There are four schools. Um, it, it, I've taught in uh, private public uh, schools and I've taught internationally as well over the past 25 years. Okay, I know, and, and uh, Kelsey, you're in New Jersey, right? Yes, uh, the Northwest corner. And Kelsey, how are about Kelsey? Kelsey? Uh, Vernon. Oh yeah, I know Vernon. I'm from back really? Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up just north of Boston. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. And hence my humor. Uh, a little bit dry, <laughs> a little bit sarcastic. There you go. <laughs> Youngest of seven. <laughs> and Kelsey, do you have 25 years in? I don't. Uh, I'm going on my 10th year, so a little nice. few years short. Very nice. So I, I, Jill just wrote with all these great ideas you're opening up the lines of communication making kids feel comfortable communicating with their teacher and with one another which is so important yeah and angela just shared a list of uh numerous what that are called yeah. campfire questions these are really good like Those are great questions the same yeah. lines that paul was talking about and Angela, uh, where did you find those? I, to be honest with you, I didn't find those. I didn't see those. Nobody them. shared those with me. Pardon me? Uh, so I also teach AVID, and I'm in an AVID like Facebook group. And so people were sharing their lists of campfire questions. So I just copy and pasted them all into one document. So some of them are AVID specific, but I just thought, I was hoping to do a question of the day with some of my classes this year. So I just thought I threw them in a document so I can go back to them for reference. Can you give us an example of a campfire question? Um, oh gosh, I haven't even looked at them that closely, but questions like, you know, super, what superpower would you want? Or um, what are you, know, what, what are, what's your goal in five years? Just, they're all like, some of them are much more personal that you would use after you've developed a good relationship with kids over, over time. Some of them are just really simple, like, you know, color, what color are you feeling or something like that. And, and Angela, how long have, have you been teaching? Uh, 18 years. Okay. I have never used that in class though. I just stole that hoping to use it. Like it was one of the resources I pulled to start using this year. Mm -hmm. it, it, um, I'm assuming March on you, uh, March on, uh, you were teaching online. Is that right? Did I, did I lose you guys? We're still here. Okay. Angela, are you there? She just. All right. I will be starting the school year online. I was, I was going to ask, um, how much time did you spend even at that point in building rapport? I mean, we all, had by then uh, established some kind of rapport, but uh, but they sure seemed to be in need of connection, of something other than content, and especially in March, that was that was quite an experience there. The end of first two weeks of March, um, seeing those kids come in. But in any event, um, so uh, Paul, I, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Was there anything okay. else you wanted to add? No, I'm just reading the comments in the chat group. Um, uh, that those are all great ideas. Um, it, we uh, we also have seventy five minute classes that were allocated, um, and and as we all know, we're thirty four minutes into a meeting right now. Um, the typical student attention span probably runs about forty to forty five minutes on a good day. Uh, so I try to encourage teachers to use asynchronous and synchronous learning to get students uh, to maintain that rapport and engagement um, without going for seventy five to one hundred minutes. Um, that, that that would probably kill me and them as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I've got four teenagers at home too, all learning. 
And so I'm watching them and I'm watching myself and it's, it's quite the learning laboratory. My goodness. Um, so you two 10th in... graders, two 10th graders, a ninth grader and a eighth grader this year. So you're one of those that gets to personally experience what's it like when a school has a schedule where all four kids and a dad have to be online at the same time, bandwidth issues galore, right? Yeah, I just go sit outside Starbucks. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and again, you know, there's so many different things going on here. Anybody who wants to chime in, please. Uh, anybody who sees anything in the chat box, I sure hope we're not skipping over anybody. Um, but, but, you know, feel free. And um, if we don't have that, uh, Carlo, you want to share, describe? Uh, yeah. The youngster in our group. You want to tell? The youngster. Yeah. I, unlike everybody else, has very little, um, or not, not as much teaching experience, I guess. I am... Um, a uh, third year teacher, I'm just entering my third year of teaching. Um, and I've taught AP social studies since I first started. So I was really thrown into the ringer um, when I first started teaching. Um, so I'll give a little background um, with myself in a minute. But Peter, could you stop sharing your screen so I could share mine really quick? Sure. Thank you. I, yeah. I think it says host disabled screen sharing. Uh, no, I didn't. Um, well, and I'm, let's see, I'm going to do this how. Um, One second. Oh, I can just. I can also just uh, share the link. presentation with you, and then I can. Um, mm, no, I didn't. How do I change that screen? I just also share it into the um, chat box. Into the chat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can. You can pull it up in the chat box. Carlo can. Oh, you can, Peter. <laughs> if you can pull it up in the chat box and then share your screen again, I apologize. Okay, building there. Mm, there we are. And then if you could share your screen again. Perfect. Thank you so much. So I'm going to ask you to click if that's okay. <laughs> Okay, so again, hi everybody. My name is Carlo Huntia. I'm in my third year of teaching, as I mentioned before. Um, I began teaching as a TFA Teacher America core member, where um, through that experience, I learned about the importance of building strong rapport in classrooms and how positive relationships can really lead to high academic success. Now, I've worked in a high need um, school district um, for the past three years. I currently work in Richmond, California, um, in the largest public high school in the district. Um, and, you know, as everybody else, I've been worrying about my students, who are some of the millions who lack access to adequate technology, about the families in my community that may be disproportionately affected by the economic downturn, and about the students who rely on our school as a place for refuge. And I, like so many other teachers, have spent way too much time converting all of the material that I've had um, for the past couple of years into um, online platform. Um, but I have to remind myself when I do that, um, that teaching is so much more than academics. Um, and as a teacher, I have a duty of creating a safe and inclusive environment where my students feel who they celebrate for who they are. And that means doing that on an online environment too. And so this past summer, I've had the pleasure of being a fellow at the George Lucas Education Foundation, where I've had the chance to meet Paul and meet Peter. Um, and through that experience, I've been able to explore different ways to support teachers through um, who are doing remote learning in the fall. So that's what I want to talk to you all about. Um, how do you build culture online? So Peter, if you click the next slide, please. So what is the first step? Um, identifying what kind of classroom culture I think is the first important um, step. Um, in order to do this, I recommend using the first few weeks of school, building and learning community norms and agreements. And I recommend using um, online free applications like Padlet or Google Docs to collaborate in creating this. Um, this can be used as a place for students to collectively share their ideas on norms and come to a consensus on what they want their classroom to look like. And having this as a shared project helps students feel part of a classroom community, especially if teachers ensure that all students are able to contribute. And Peter, can you click the next slide, please? Yeah. If you take a look at this, thank you, Peter, this is Padlet. Um, this is a way that students can collaborate with each other and share their ideas um, in real time. So if you give students a link to your own Padlet, they can put their own ideas and it's able to be posted real time. Um, unfortunately, though, you can't censor what they're going to be posting. So as long as you establish norms first, that is an important key step. But as you can see here, this is an example of how students can contribute their ideas right? Um, what kind of culture they want, um, talking about one mic, talking about the ability to collaborate with each other and listening carefully. 
all those ideas can be created using Padlet. Um, and these norms should be reviewed every single class session so that they become routine and students can reflect on the weekly commitments and comment on their effectiveness using tools like Google Forms or SurveyMonkey. And Peter, could you click the next slide, please? There you go. So thank you. This is an example of how um, Google Forms can be um, used in order to reflect on um, their own experience with the, with the culture of the classroom, um, how they're feeling, to do check-ins with them. Um, and this is a way for you to gauge a temperature of your own classroom. Awesome. And Peter, could you click the next slide for me, please? So in order for students to get to know one another, consider giving them the opportunity to personalize Google Slides or YouTube videos or create social media or classroom specific social media pages where students can introduce themselves. Um, this gives the chance for the students to you know, meet one another beyond the scope of Zoom. Um, this also gives the opportunity to share your own story in a personalized way. So Peter, could you show an example on the next slide, please? So this is my own personal personalized slide, you know, for, for my students to get to know who I am, right? Um, talking about where I grew up, what I studied, and some hobbies, right? This is a way for your students to get to know one another. Super simple, and it gives that personalized touch. And by giving the students to do the opportunity to make their own slide, it gives that creative edge that they um, have the opportunity to do in the, in the classroom. Um, additionally, in order to stay connected to your students, can you click the next slide, please? There are really great apps like the Remind Message app, which makes it really easy to stay connected with your students by providing real-time communication um, in, a personal, in a way that allows for um, personal information to be private. So I use this app all the time to check in with my students, ask them, you know, how are you doing? What's going on with a certain assignment? Is there anything I can do to support you with? Right, and there are other um, really great tools like Remind, like GroupMe is a really great, um, application through Microsoft, which allows students to communicate with one another, schedule calendar invites and collaborate on one platform. And these allow educators to um, quickly answer questions to any um, anything your students may have. And all of these are free, by the way. Um, and I think I have a few more slides left. Peter, thank you. So there are a bunch of opportunities for collaboration, which can build really strong culture in a classroom as well. Um, video apps like the ones we're using right now with Zoom or Google Hangouts are really powerful in their ability to convene students um, to work with one another. Breakout features allow for classrooms to have small groups um, and have more in intimate um, interactions with one another. And one other idea that I think is really useful, Peter, could you click the next slide, please? is the idea of exploring project-based learning, especially in a distance learning environment. Um, PBL is a student-centered pedagogical approach that promotes learning through the exploration of real world challenges. And particularly um, in this current political climate and with our, the class that we teach, this is so important um, for students to be able to see and make connections outside the classroom. And PBL really allows for that to happen. So PBL is built on collaborative projects that give students and educators to, the opportunity to work as a team um, towards a common learning goal. And I think PBL has the opportunity to not only increase engagement both online and in person, but also has the enormous capacity to build a positive learning environment. Mm -hmm. So those are some of my ideas. Um, Peter, could you click the next slide, please? And I know I just said a million things, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link um, a uh, link to an article that I wrote that actually lists all of these different um, resources um, with an explanation of how to use them. And all of them are free. Um, and so this is a really great um, opportunity, I think, for us to explore the different ways that we can still, you know, maintain that culture and that positive um, community that is so essential to learning, um, especially in this time when our students really need us the most. Mm. Carla, I'm, are you done there? I, um... mm -hmm. So uh, I said at the outset that you were going to make this recommendation about something that I've, well, first of all, everybody, uh, I wrote the, the original draft and then I brought Carlo on and then he and I have worked together on this draft and we brought in all these other teachers. That's the, the document that I, the long document that I sent out to you. And uh, then they brought feedback and we went through a number of editions and so on. So, uh, you know, he had mentioned to me, we really should get in there into the article. One of, uh, if, if we go back to that chart I showed you at the beginning, uh, the, the need to introduce PBLs and, and to teach with PBLs. And, um, you know, at that point, it was just really too late for me, but I do think he's right. I, I, I think that uh, not only does the era of online teaching uh, lend itself, maybe even all but 
dictate that we move towards PBLs uh, as, a, as a form of delivering content, but also as a, as a way to, to build rapport and probably mm -hmm. also even to assess. Uh, I just want to make sure that I, I got that point. You really do believe that project-based learning, probably more so than anything, is going to build rapport. Is that is that? Oh, yeah. I, I think just considering the ways in which technological advances really give us the opportunity to still have really um, important collaboration with each other. Students can collaborate with each other using FaceTime, using Zoom. They can build projects that they can, that they can do at home um, and then present it through these platforms, right? And so it allows for this for the student to have the ability to still be creative, still have agency and use their voice um, to express their own and to express their learning, but also the chance to get to know one another, right? Through that collaboration. If you stress that that this is done as a team, that builds that rapport that is so essential, um, especially right now when so many of us are looking to, for that human connectivity with one another. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to jump in and underscore Carlo's um, his enthusiasm for project-based learning. Uh, that's how Carlo and I met. Actually, I've been working mm -hmm. with the Lucas Foundation now for oh, almost four years, five years, in their PBL environment on um, AP government. Uh, it absolutely is essential for students at this point to um, to engage education um, as agents of their own um, of their own education, essentially. Uh, and, and online education is is no impediment to that. In fact, it actually enhances it. Uh, to go even one step further, where students can collaborate and do collaborate online, we can meet with students um, at all times and record all of those meetings to, for our own safety and all that kind of stuff, um, to, to workshop with them on ideas, to have small breakout groups at four or five o'clock. And yeah, I know many of us are part of unions that would be a um, you know, <laughs> pushback on that, but uh, really what we're trying to do is enhance student learning. Um, and so if you're not connected to PBL Works, um, it's, it's the former Buck Institute for Education. Um, they're in collaboration, obviously, with the George uh, Lucas Foundation. Uh, there's some fantastic resources there. Uh, they have PBL 101, PBL 201 as courses to take that are also online. Um, so th these, are, these are enhancements that we can do. And I, I teach actually AP Gov and have taught AP Gov now for six years in a, in a PBL environment with five basic projects. Um, I'll still start this year with the foundations unit uh, and founding fathers, and I'll still do the um, the virtual um, founding fathers collective, if you will, and then move into a virtual um, congressional unit where students are actually taking on roles um, as as Congress people, um, specifically representing districts uh, via um, an online um, workshop, essentially. So the, this is still possible. Um, being online is no impediment to to using PBL. So. Thank you, Carlo, for, for plugging that, and I'm right there with you. I've been so curious about that curriculum. I only teach the semester course, um, but if I taught the year, I'd have to give that a go, I gotta tell you. It's designed for the year, right, Paul? Mm -hmm. um, it is, but I think you can still do it in a semester, um, but you have to kind of prune things. Uh, and we can talk offline about that with some ideas. That's also what I've been working on, um, kind of off the side uh, for the past few years. But for the uh, teachers here who wanted to perhaps consider it and give it a go, there's no cost to them, right? No, no, not at all. Um, it's free. Tom Ritchie, my friend, are you here? I am, Peter. I am. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Nice of you to join us tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice of you to invite me. Appreciate the invitation. And I guess I'll be back uh, next week to just show some of the stuff, some of the resources that we're making available. I'm on my website and uh, at Marco Learning. And yeah, really enjoyed Carlo's presentation. And I was I was just wondering in turn, uh, in terms of on this, uh, you know, the Padlet looked pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Can you tell, like, who posts, like, if somebody posts something inappropriate, is it immediately mm -hmm. apparent who did it? Um, no. <laughs> so that's one of the things that you have to discuss with oh, your students, right? Okay. Establish norms and stuff. Um, I would assume, you know, I would hope, hope by, the, by, you know, with our 12th graders that they would be a little more mature at this point. But we can only right. hope. That's, yeah, I think, yeah, fingers crossed. Okay, I just, I was just curious. But yeah, it's usual, usually if you, you know, you make that clear then you know but it's it's always it's always interesting to think about that because you know i was actually 
I'm talking to some people today and we were talking about like how to, you know, if we're in districts where, you know, we are online, but we have a synchronous learning capacity where we can say class meets at this time, you know, just all kinds of little strategies to make sure, oh, here's your FRQ topic and here's how I'm going to make them think that I'm watching them a little bit closer, more closely than I am. So, um, so yeah, this is good. Thanks for doing, uh, you know, thanks for sharing that. This is going to be good to get out there. Tom, uh, Tom did you, uh, well, first of all, I two questions. First of all, do you have a favorite uh, idea you want to share about how you, um, you build rapport? And then secondly, what I want to ask you here is to what extent do you share personal stories uh, in order to build rapport? Stories about Tom. Yeah, you know, that, that is, uh, that, that's, that's the question, isn't it? I, I guess once in a while, like what I, what I do sometimes, and it changes from year to year, but there have been times where I had students for a three-year progression. <laughs> so by the time they get to a push, for example, third year, then they get to hear certain stories, you know, and then somebody will ask about, oh, what about this story, Richie? And I'm like, no, you're going to have to take a push. Uh, so, so with that, I usually, just kind of do a bit of a bit of a slow drip and try to you know not say too much uh, you know when you know at the very beginning but I tell you it's like a lot of people turn to me because I make online videos and stuff and the thing is though when it comes to actually teaching online like students that I'm accountable for grading and stuff like that I'm as lost as anybody else. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's it's great to, that you put together this group here, and I'm here to you know here to learn and get ideas. So, uh, you, so is it fair to say that you don't share much about yourself personally uh, in the, in the name of rapport building? In a, in a well, rapport? depending because see, sometimes I have to like wave off. Like somebody will ask me about something that I posted on social media on my own time and stuff like that. So sometimes just like you know a matter of waving off. Um, so that's, that's one thing that I think is just kind of a, you know, unique sort of thing that, that keeps, you know, that keeps moving here and there. So, you know, but that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. I probably should, uh, should think about that, but it's, it's really one of those things. Like I just remember when I was, you know, when I was younger, I used to just, speak a lot more freely about everything and then you know you get uh, you get about mid-career and then you're thinking like okay I've got uh, you know what I've got about 12 more years or something like that to, to stick it out and that sort of thing and then I think you get to that like time where you know that teacher on the hall who could have retired three years ago but for some reason like hasn't and then they can just uh, they can just share anything they want uh, so I think that I am kind of in that sort of mid-career kind of like okay let's uh, get you know talk to me in like another 15 years and I'll, I'll probably uh, <laughs> probably answer a little differently. Paul, do you share stories about yourself? Um, I, I, yes, and I, <laughs> over the as I said, over the past you know career, I guess you could say, twenty five years, um, I, I came in as a, as a New Englander, um, quite tight lipped and, and very protective of my space, uh, despite the fact that I started teaching in California, which was a little bit more hippy dippy and lovey dovey, um, as my brothers and sister would say. Anyway, um, so over time, yeah, but the question that we talked about this afternoon, Peter, was when students ask that question that is probative um, and possibly um, kind of interruptive to your own personal life, the question back to them is, um, how, why is that question important to you? Um, why is it important that you know that information about me? And so to flip it back to them so they don't feel like they are actually intrusive in a way, but to show them as, as teachers to students to say, well, I could tell you the answer to that, but why is that important for you to know that about me? Um, and then in, you could even say, well, in 20 years, would you share that information with someone uh, your age? Um, so it gets them into that dialogue of questioning and thinking, uh, as opposed to just saying, no, I'm not going to tell you. Um, or, yeah, actually, you know, when I was 18, I got plowed and wasted and drove my car into a stop sign. So sure, go for it. Um, but anyway, the <laughs> boundaries, okay, um, is what we, we want. Um, so yeah, I'm very selective about the stories and, and, and students will know over the course of years what stories I'll tell when. Mm. I'm getting that old where they're, they're, oh, it's November, he's gonna tell us the story about this, uh, you know, about the turducken that he made back in 1987. Uh, 
So anyway, uh, I, stories are good to reveal, uh, but we have to be careful about the stories that we share and then ask the students the questions, why do you need to know that? In putting together the, the article that I sent out to you guys, it was interesting how many uh, experts, if you will, are, are suggesting that uh, teachers share personal stories. I've never been one much for it. Um, I, in the article, I reveal one story that I do share in the name of rapport building. But um, you know, I'm also seeing in the chat box here that there are a number of teachers who do just that. Uh, Tim, you, you talk about curated stories because that really brings the next question up. I've heard from a number of teachers who say it's a great idea. I hear some who say it's not such a great idea, but even with those who say it's a great idea, there's this whole debate about whether it should happen organically, uh, you know, or, or whether you should even plan a few. Uh, there's some teachers that believe, boy, if you ever plan it, curate it, I suppose, it, it's not gonna be authentic. Uh, Tim, you wanna comment about that? Uh, it sounds like you have them some planned out in advance. I'm not Tim. Oh. I'm Wendy. It's my husband's um, oh. com Zoom account. Got it. So I am I have been teaching AP Gov for like 15 years. So by now it's almost scripted. Um, and the same stories kind of come up. And kids always ask, you know, oh, what were you like in college? And I'm like, I was boring. But I will talk about immigrating. I will talk about if I have um, occasionally something about my kids, they don't go to the same school, um, that I think relates. But you know, students always wanna say, were you wild? Did you drink? Did you do drugs? And I'm like, that's oh, not anything that's related to the subject. So <clears throat> I can't think of any specific stories up, off the top of my head, but the same ones as I'm like, you know, talking about a topic, they'll come up. Um, and sometimes it's about teaching and in, in, in prior students um, and, you know, experiences that maybe they shared um, in class or something. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Sure. Yeah. Um, what, but do you use that phrase curated? So by that, what you mean is that they're, they're the same ones that come up year in, year out. Is that what you meant by that? Yeah, and there's and I'm pretty selective in in what I choose to share um, with students. That um, you know, I don't care if they know that I have kids and you know that I am an immigrant and you know where I came from and you know different culture stuff that's relevant to the course. Mm -hmm. But um, You know, or even I went hiking this weekend or we watched rugby, stuff like that. I don't want, care if they know, but, you know, there are boundaries. Carlo, uh, younger teacher, are you, <laughs> like, are you more likely to share? I would think that the younger ones. Yeah, are, you know, my, share, right? I, I'm, when I first started teaching and I taught 12th graders, I wasn't that much older than my students. <laughs> so it was kind of an awkward, you know, space to be because one you know my students kept asking me how old are you how old are you how old are you and I just would say old enough to be your teacher um but at the same time you know I, I realized that um students really learn more from me if they feel some feel connected to me um in one way you know my age is able to lend it lends itself to that but I also find a lot of value in being vulnerable with my students um for example um telling them my experiences growing up um being um you know a student might you know trying to understand navigate the education system myself and what kind of barriers i had to overcome um and how i was able to connect with my students so that through that level um you know making it so that i humanizing myself as a person who makes mistakes telling stories of when i've you know messed up before um you know lets my students understand that it's okay to mess up in the classroom too you know, it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to learn because we're here to grow together. And so I'm a human who has flaws. Let's work together to, you know, be better. And so I, I share stories, you know, nothing crazy, but definitely stories of hardship mm -hmm. I like to share with them. Is there another younger teacher here today? And I realize we're coming to the end of our hour, but we started just a few minutes late. So I hope you don't mind if I just go over five minutes or so. But is there another younger teacher here in the group who um, would say, yeah, they're, they're more likely to share or is there anybody with three four years five years of experience 
just curious. Is there anybody here with us right now who uh, ha has something they'd like to offer that we have, have and hasn't yet been given a chance, wants to bring it forward now? Now, one thing I do, Peter, like every year, and I've, I've done this since my first year, is just like an icebreaker mm -hmm. where we go to the beach and they say like their name and what they're bringing. And if what they're bringing doesn't like start with the same sound as their name, then they're not going. And so it goes through this whole thing, but everybody has to name everyone else. And so it's, it's something that's fun. Like sometimes a sibling will tell their sibling the rules of the game. Like a sibling will get there and be like, oh, I know what this is. I mean, they just, they know year after year after year. And so that's one thing that I could actually do. Like we're planning on going face to face, but who knows? Mm -hmm. But if it's online, I think we would do the exact same thing because it's like everybody has to name everybody who's gone so far, which could be interesting on a Zoom because you don't even know what order people are in. But you know, that's, that's one thing I learned early on is, you know, if you, if you don't know their names, then why are you trying to teach them anything? So that, that's one thing that's, that's worked for me so well that I've just done it every year of my career consistently. Tom, with all the videos you produce, do you get the feeling that those kids just come in and they, that there's instant rapport? Do you get that sense? It really depends, you know, it's, it's one of those things that can be like a little bit like, you know, in, intimidating somewhat when you're in that situation where, wait, they already know something about me and I know nothing about them. Um, so for some of them, it, it does. Uh, it, it is one of those things where, you know, some of the kids um, kind of, they get curious about it. And so that is something that is interesting um, but then it's kind of like one of those things where, um, what is it? The um, more cowbell, like the more cowbell sketch, you know, and he's just like, you know, I put my, put my pants on just like you do one leg at a time. Uh, and so you kind of have to bring it out into, you know, like, okay, we're, we're here to learn and you're going to, you're, you're going to be tired of me within a few weeks. So <laughs> kind of thing, but yeah. Kelsey, did you, do you share? You're sort of in that middle group, right? Yeah, and I would echo what Tom said earlier. I think when I was younger, I was probably sharing a little bit more. And then for better or worse, I moved into the township that I also uh, teach in. So that um, really put a sensor, you know, I can't, you know, talk about, you know, how the cops are called on my annoying neighbor and, you know, how police are, you know, part of the local form of government. Um, but I will agree that I think, you know, when I do share, I try to be either, you know, very selective. Um, like, for example, my dad worked for the Department of Veteran Affairs. So that's something I'll go into. But I mean, I don't tend to get ultra personal beyond I have a dog and, you know, I have a wife who also actually teaches at the same high school. So we both have to check ourselves <laughs> um, as well. When school shut down in, in March, um, in my district anyway, we had this 90 minute office hour on Fridays and no one was showing up. Teachers, in fact, weren't even making themselves available and it just seemed like this horrible waste. I was teaching a number of A-push classes and, and the students in there, they, they were the one that came forward with the idea that, hey, can we just come to office hours and, and hang out? And I pushed them a little bit and the message came for, can we just hang out like we would if, the, if, if it were a rainy day, you know, like you might let us into your room. And, um, you know, sure, when they came, they, they said, hey, can you show us a picture of your dog? And I live at the beach, you know, can, can we see a picture of what it looks like when you look out the window? And the answer to all of that was really no. I just wasn't comfortable with that. I certainly didn't want them to, to anybody to see what it looked like outside the living room window. I mean, then they could find the house easy enough. But um, but it, but it was interesting to see how much they wanted to share of themselves, their instruments that they played and their ability to sing this song and shoot this basketball. Uh, it also was interesting to see the extent to which they wanted other teachers, middle school teachers, popular teachers at the high school to come and just meet with them and chat with them. Uh, one of the middle school teachers uh, played uh, guitar, ACDC or something like that, and, and had a studio. And, so he showed up and kids just love that sort of thing, a total bonding, total rapport building. More often than not, I, I just made it all available, just like I would on a rainy day, sat back and, and let them uh, hang out. And it was, it was really kind of interesting. 
So um, I, I just want to share that with Jim. I, I saw that you said something. I want to give you a chance here. Frowns and smiles. What was that? There's so much in the chat box. Uh, yeah. So uh, old Tom, guy here. Tom, right? Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Yeah. So this, I, I stole this. The best teachers are good thieves, right? So <laughs> I, st I stole this uh, off of Twitter from Monty Syrie, and he's a he's an English teacher up in Washington. Phenomenal. But the whole premise behind it is again rapport building, and I do it every day. Start the class. And some days I'm getting in, you know, I always greeted him at the door, fist bump, whatever. Um, I'd get up the front and I think, okay, got to get into content. And now all of a sudden a couple of hands, what about smiles and frowns? I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. And, and basically it's just that, it, smiles and frowns, what do you got for me? And I would start off a smile, uh, great day today, and I'd give him a reason why today's a great day. Or, or last night my volleyball team won, big match, a frown. Waited in Costco for an hour and a half and still no toilet paper, you know, whatever it was. And, um, and then I would just open it up and I wouldn't necessarily go every day. Uh, in fact, most days I wouldn't uh, because enough kids wanted to do it. And it was just a lot of times I got an A on a test. Uh, a lot of times my, my brother, <laughs> this one kid, you know, my family is going away for a week. I got the house to myself. I don't want to go to Mexico, but you know, whatever it was. And it was, and kids loved it. And um, I had one kid who started doing an, it had nothing to do with smiles and frowns. It was animal fact of the day. And so now he's starting to do, he would give an animal fact for the day. And, it, and in going back to what somebody said, do, do I lose 10 minutes of content? I absolutely do. But I'll do it time and time again because the kids, in fact, while, we were, while I was listening, I was DMing one of my students who just went to Utah to play soccer. And I asked her about, she goes, oh my gosh, that was the best part of the day. Uh, and so what, and I just thought of it, I'm going to, I'm going to, do it on Instagram, like once a week, once the school year starts out, smiles and frowns, see how much feedback I get from the kids that are following me and that I follow on, on Instagram after they graduate. So cool. it's, it's, I know we're running out of time, but it's, uh, it's really a, a great tool. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, what'd you call it? Frown? Uh, smiles and frowns. I'm going to write that one down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have, we have come to the end, and I can't thank you all enough. Uh, I've been taking notes here, and I'm going to see if I can somehow work a lot of these great ideas into the article, or at least uh, work them into my class one way or the other. Is there anybody who'd like to say anything in closing here? Um, has it been said yet? Okay, then. Well, I want to thank you all for, for being here tonight and, and offering up, uh, the presenters as well, and uh, look forward to seeing you all next week. We'll, we'll send out the emails, let you know who's going to be hosting. I'm going to try to switch the hostings around and the co-hosting. If there's anybody you would like to host, co-host, present, uh, I, I, I'm not going to be here at the front every week. Uh, we have a nice schedule for you. Uh, doors wide open. Anybody who wants to step up, just let us know. All right? So that's it. I wish you all well. Stay safe, stay uh, happy and healthy, will you? Take good care. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Take care, all. <laughs>